So I'm here today at Cherston Golf Club and as I'm doing a personal repair today I thought I would share with you what I'm doing and why I'm doing it. If you are new to the channel you like what you're seeing then please hit that subscribe button. So today's video I'm going to change the lie angle of a golf club. I purchased this particular golf club probably six weeks ago from the shop here at Cherston Golf Club and it's basically it's a Cleveland wedge. It's the CBX4 and the reason I'm using it and instead of using the Vokies is because of the size of the head. It's very forgiving and it's also got a lot of bounce on the actual sole plate of the golf club. We've explained what bounce is and how that works and why it benefits golfers and if you haven't seen that video then I will stick a link in this description of this video that you can check that video out if you require. I do really like this particular wedge but unfortunately it doesn't match in with my other three Vokies that I have in the bag and the reason it doesn't match in a club for now and the reason it doesn't match in is because the lie angle of this particular club is different to my existing wedges. When we talk about lie angle we can talk about it from two different positions we can talk about it at static lie angle so how this club is actually manufactured and how it sits is the static lie angle so we know what it is it's 64 degree lie angle and the lie angle is the shaft if you took the shaft straight down and then we look at the center of the actual golf club and how it sits to the ground that angle from the shaft coming out from the middle of the golf club is the lie angle of the golf club but when we hit a golf shot we have a thing called a dynamic lie angle when we talk about dynamic lie angle we're talking about how that club is delivered back to the ball and what angle that that club face and the angle between the sort of how it sits to the ground and the angle of the shaft how it is delivered back to the ball and that can vary massively i'm going to demonstrate what the lie angle does at impacts and there's probably better videos than this one if you're actually interested in lie angle so i've just grabbed a pen you won't see my face which some people say is a good thing if I completely deliver this club back into a neutral position, you'll notice how the actual pen will point directly at the camera or directly at our target. If we present the club with the heel to the ground first, so we dig it in with a heel, you'll see how now the angle of the face is pointing to my left hand side. And if we deliver the club with the toe into the ground and the heel off the ground, then you'll see how the pen points to the right hand side. So what I've found since putting this particular club in play when I've been going at it and hitting it to its maximum capabilities or maximum distance that I do have the occasional long left miss. And the issue with that is that I've suddenly lost a little bit of confidence hitting this hard and hitting this full. So I've decided we're going to need to flatten that club which will mean in turn bringing the toe of the golf club down towards the ground so that that face comes back into impact more square or parallel to our target. I think it's important just to mention at this particular stage that it's much easier to bend and to change the loft and lie angles of golf clubs if they're forged. You can bend cast clubs but I would recommend probably that you get a manufacturer if you bought your clubs from Titleist, Callaway, TaylorMade, Ping, etc. that they change the club when you make the purchase or send them back and they would do it because there is a possibility when you're bending a cast club that you can actually snap or damage the golf club. For me personally, if I'm doing a repair like that and I, and I have a member or someone insist that I try and bend a cast club, I give them a bit of a warning that it could actually break and that I'm not going to be responsible for any damage caused. This is my club, so I'm not really that, I'd say not bothered, obviously I'm bothered, but if I break it, it's not the end of the world, at least we'd have made a video, it'd probably be quite funny, and it might even go viral. So before we can bend it, I've had to just check the specs of this particular club. I've gone on to Cleveland's website, which is Shrixen, they're both the same sort of company, and I found out that obviously we know it's 58 degrees, 12 degree bounce, but the lie angle is 64 degrees as their standard. Again, it's important to remember there's not a standard between across the board. Each manufacturer will have a different lie angle or different degree of, in their clubs that they call standard. But that's again can be changed. So don't just, if you get fitted for a set of ping clubs and you're one degree upright, 
then don't go and buy a set of Strixon and get them one degree upright because the lie angles could be completely different as well as the lofts. I'm just going to set this club into the machine. This is the loft and line machine. These are available from Goldsmith. I think they're around about a thousand pound, maybe slightly more now. So you just un undo it as so. We then pop the club face against this bar here, making sure that all the face is covered and it's nice and square to the machine. Tighten up from this angle and then just really tighten it down. This is the brass plate underneath here that I've got my hand on now. I think you should better see that. This is a close up of the plate. That won't damage the club because it's quite soft, but we make sure that's nicely fastened and nicely tightened into place and that is not going anywhere. I am holding the camera while I'm doing this, so hopefully it's not too shaky. That is the loft of the golf club here. And then on this adjacent dial, we have the lie angle. If I just take you across here, you'll see that is the lie angle. So just moving the dial into place. We've got 58 degrees here. There's the 60, so on 58. So we know that that hasn't altered, which is good because sometimes clubs will alter the loft if you are practicing a lot and have done quite a bit of practice. And then if we come round to this particular area here, it should be 64 degrees and it more or less is spot on. I mean, the machine's pretty good, but it is, it is around about 64 degrees. So we're happy with the spec being how it should be. It's important to note that although this machine is pretty accurate, it's not as, a, it's not as accurate as some of the ones you'll see on the tour van. You'll see some electronic ones, which will give you an electronic reading, which are probably more accurate than this one. But this is good enough for me for what I'm doing. It's given me a decent reading. I know that that club is more or less where it should be. And now we're only going to move it one degree. So now we're going to alter the lie of this golf club. And this is basically the bending bar. This is a close up of the bending bar. You'll notice the bit of brass as well, which helps to protect when we actually try and bend the club in a minute. Just basically a solid bar with a rubber grip. So what we do with that is we take it down the shaft here. Just take you from a different angle. Again, apologies, this is quite difficult to do at the same time as filming so we're going to make sure we are sort of parallel to the club face and what we're going to do is going to bend downwards so we're going to take that downwards which will then flatten the lie angle a little bit restricted by spacing this i'm having to actually do this and then just make sure we just pull it down slowly keep bending it take it back up you can add a little bit of tape around here if you wish i've just bent it i'm just going to check the lie angle so like that just showing you a close up of the actual club and you'll see there's not, I've got a slight, slight mark there, but it's very minor, which you'd have to really examine that closely to see any particular mark. I'm not really bothered. And when I practice and play quite a bit, I'm going to get the odd mark around here anyway, as the club wears. So it doesn't really bother me that much. If I was doing a repair for someone, I would put a little bit of extra tape around there, which would then protect the club slightly more as well. I'm going to put it back into the loft and line machine and we're just going to now check to see whether we've bent that from 64 to 63. Hopefully we have. It might need a little bit more adjustment. I sort of know how to move it by one degree. It's very minimal the amount of pressure you have to put on it and for the, the length of time as well. So I'm pretty sure this is going to be close to where we want it to be. So let's just have a little look now. We'll put it back in the machine and check the lie angle of the golf club. Okay, and we have managed to bend that. So it didn't take a lot of bending. It is quite soft metal. I will just show you that now. I'm just gonna try and focus in a little bit more. And there you go, that's more or less, probably just a little bit under 63, maybe 62 and three quarters. So I probably bent it a little bit too much, but that should be fine. I will try it on the golf course now. It's always important to then go and put the, put the, the club back into play just to make sure that I'm not now missing everything miles right because that could be a concern if I've gone too far the other way I may have changed one problem and then provided another problem but I'm pretty hopeful that that one degree although it sounds very minimal should make more should make a considerable difference but it also should give me the confidence to be able to hit this club fully and expect not to lose the ball long and left. 
if I if I wanted to make that club more upright I would then lift upwards which would then lift the shaft angle upwards do check that you haven't altered the loft of the golf club I've seen people get a slightly wrong angle and not gone completely sort of parallel to the club face when they're lifting up and got an angle and they've not only changed the lie angle which is what they wanted but then they've altered the loft of the golf club if we had altered the actual loft of the golf club then that will in effect change the bounce so it's important that when I was buying this wedge that I actually got the right loft for me which is generally 58 I didn't want to buy a 60 and then de-loft it because that would change the actual bounce and the whole idea of this club was to have more bounce be more forgiving and to be slightly easier to use than my Vokey clubs. Thanks for watching. I will do a full set of golf clubs and I probably might even build them to spec in the winter, but it's more of a winter project. I just wanted to put this little filler video in because people are asking me what sort of repairs that I carry out on a day-to-day -day basis. And this is one of those repairs that I would carry out, but it just happens to be for my own personal self. So I just thought I would record it and document it so you could see what I'm doing to my own golf clubs. If you want to see anything else in the workshop, whether you want to see a reshaft, how I do them, or even a, a grip, there are some grip videos on here, or you want me to review some grips or review some different types of shaft, then again, hit them in the comment section. So I do need a few ideas for videos based around the workshop for winter. Anyway, waffled enough. Thanks for watching. Hit that subscribe button, like this video, comment below, and thanks for watching. <music>